Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Our topic today is hope. I do believe I've spoken of this topic before on Sunday Morning Coffee. After all, it's been over a year, well over a year that we've been doing these podcast episodes. Sometimes they're in audio format, sometimes they're in video. I love the opportunity to take a topic that means a lot to us or something that we're curious about that's connected to our spirit, to the energy, and also most often to our human life experience. That's the point, isn't it? After all, with all this spiritual and intuitive stuff to actually make it practical, apply it to real life after all, isn't that what Above Life Channel is about? Taking the information that we get from afterlife celebrity channeling and applying it to real human life. Yes. Thanks for being here. Hope. We're going to take this word. We're going to break it down. I've done this many, many times for several years in my coaching work. Taking a word, because words have so much power. They're so vibrational. They have so much frequency and energy. We take that for granted a lot, but words are really the best way that energy is translated from the brain and the mind. And so it's important to be on board, working together, mind, heart, body, and soul in the translation process, right? In the alignment process. So we take the word and we break it down. We take the, the letter of each, each letter of the word, and we give it another word. You can use this in a lot of different ways. There's a lot of journaling techniques you can use for this like a data dump, a clearing your mind, a connection to um, help to move through or clear out negativity energy and use negative words on purpose and shift into positive words on purpose, that kind of a thing. There's lots that you can do and to discover underlying potential of what that word actually means or represents for you because often there's a reason why the mind chose that in the best translation energetically. So we're gonna take the word hope, H-O-P-E. I have a notebook right here next to me. I'm gonna write the letters vertically down the page and we are gonna go with what shows up. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do this. You can do this with any word, by the way. If you are doing a word of the year kind of a thing or a word of the month, or word of the season, whatever it is, to help kind of give you an alignment or a North Star or some kind of a energy connector. This is something that you can do um, with that particular word. So you can use any word, all right? So we have hope. It's nice when you use small words. It's real easy to do then. So let's start with the H, happiness. Oh, happiness. I should mention, I'm actually recording this Sunday morning coffee close to the end of the year. So there's definitely an energy of shift, transition, and hopefulness toward the new is how I'm feeling as I am actually recording this. You should know my energetic bias, right? So H, happiness. Oh, optimistic. P, positive. E, everything. With H, I also see Archangel Hanel. Did you know that I do a lot of work with angels? You may or may not know. In private session, in fact, that's how I do a lot of work, especially if I'm doing like a mediumship session or something like that with afterlife, you know, connecting to the afterlife with intent. Um, archangels are so often my go-to. They're very socially acceptable. They're completely androgynous, non-denominational, multicultural, all of that. So Archangel Hanel is very heart-based, very empathic, connected to our heart space, honoring the heart of us. And what she's bringing forward right now in this conversation for hope is about compassion. Wow, lots of pink energy, compassion. If you know me at all, you know I'm really into color. Color also gives information to us. It's a language that I use within myself and with my spiritual helpers and healing team that I've developed over time, just like you will develop your own language with your support helpers, right? So pink, compassion. Ooh, it's an opportunity here. Ooh, that's an O word, opportunity. The H is Hannah. 
So we're going to do that. So we're already going back down <laughs> the word hope. H is for Hanel, Archangel Hanel, supporting your heart space, bringing in the energy of compassion. O is for opportunity. Mm. E is for ease. I'm jumping right down to ease. Ease. The ease. Not effort, but ease. Not effort, but ease. <laughs> There's a nice flow to that, isn't there? So with Archangel Hanel, bringing in an opportunity for ease is accessing the flow, all right? So P is going to be power, the powerful energy that comes when we are simply in our flow state. This is part of what the energy of hope is grounding for us. The word hope is a grounded word as it shows up for you today. Usually when I see hope, I see purple. That's why my merch, okay, my merch on Above Life channel, my merch on Fairy Grasshopper, which you will see if you go to the YouTube channel, you'll see it kind of scrolling underneath the bottom of the description. I have hope merch. I'm wearing it right now. You can't see it. <laughs> but trust, I'm wearing a nice baggy, comfy, extra large, black hooded sweatshirt that says hope. However, the other color that my hope merchandise is in is purple because purple is usually the color that comes through, right? I love that. That's like my vibe of hope. Purple, hope, divine feminine, divine connection, crown chakra. For you though, for you listener right here, right now in this episode of Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget, we are connected to hope and you are getting it red. It is pure, solid red. And red is the root chakra. If you don't know what chakras are, by the way, they are energy centers in your body. If you do yoga or meditation, you may have heard about chakras. Red is the root. It's at the base of the spine, the tailbone, the tap root, the, the grounded energy of as if you were a tree, the roots going into the earth. Like not making you stuck, but helping you be connected. See, that's confusion. A lot of people who are empathic and start to read energy intuitively without even knowing that's what you're doing. <clears throat> yeah, I know. At first it's hard. You don't know. You just think you're too emotional and really you're very psychic. In case you didn't know, that's what's up with y'all. If you think you're too emotional, you're probably very psychic. <clears throat> you're probably very psychic in your heart space, which is clairsentient which is the empathic energy. So, ooh, that red root chakra energy is gonna help really center you. It's gonna help you feel more stable, more steady, less crazy, less spinny, less out of your body, more in your body. Um, it is very common to misunderstand grounded energy as um, uh, with this fear kind of mixed in of being stuck. Nobody wants to be stuck. Everybody hates being stuck. Yeah, we all have resistance. Constant, consistent patterns of resistance, which is why we don't like being stuck, but yet we are. And we're stagnant. And we want what? We want Archangel Hanel to step in with the opportunity for ease and flow and the power of that that unfolds from hope that is grounded and centered within us. Yet, you can be grounded and free. Grounded does not mean stuck. It's not a punishment like when you were grown up. When I was grown up, you get grounded because you're in trouble. You are stuck in your home. You're, you're grounded from your phone or your computer or whatever it might be nowadays. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It means you are earthly present, which means you are present for your human life, which means as a person, you are showing up. And when you show up, you do stuff. And when you do stuff, you contribute. And when you contribute, you make the world a better place. Okay, we're just going to give you the benefit of the doubt on that, that that's exactly what you're doing because you're so what positive in the energy of hope, right? When you express, then you are manifesting. And when you are manifesting, the only way you can manifest in your human form is to be grounded in your body. Now you are limited in your capacity if you're not fully present in your body. And most people who are very psychic or intuitive or have re read energy your whole life and used energy information, sensory, heart-based information to decide who you're gonna be with in relationship or how you're gonna be with them. You're reading them and then you're responding energetically. A lot of people do this, most people do this. To the degree at which you do this is how psychic or intuitive you are, by the way. Just give you a little insight there. And it's completely 100% normal to have that as part of your natural human experience. However, 
it's easy to get overloaded, overwhelmed, and not want to be in your body because your body's filled up with other people's crap. And it is necessary for you to be in your body so that you can receive what? Hope, inspiration, great ideas, and be able to fully, more fully manifest. You can still manifest when you're kind of half in your body, half out of your body. People do it all the time. It happens all the time. People are successful all the time, but only halfway. Imagine how much more abundant, successful, and impactful they can be as change makers in the world and for their own lives, live in their own lives at what? Full happiness mode. Happiness, that's the first letter that we used for hope. Happiness, if that is indeed the goal, which it is to have experiences that provide and evoke happiness for you and for all of those who are around you, you must be fully present in your body, which means you must be grounded. So today, hope for you is red. It is a grounded, rich, red energy. It is like the beat of a heart. It is pulsing, it is fluid, it is moving, and yet it is thriving with life source energy. And that is you. That is who you are today. So the word hope. Let's do more. Let's do more with this, should we? Let's say, hey, what do we need to clear? If you're feeling stuck or stagnant, and I say the word hope and you want to gag because you're like, oh, please, so much positive energy. I don't know if I can handle it, Bridget. I'm usually in a good mood. I'm usually a good person. I'm usually really pretty optimistic. And right now I just don't feel quite optimistic and I might feel on the edge of borderline crap. And so I can't handle all this, Bridget. I just can't handle the sweetness. Okay. I feel you. I've had days like that recently. Let me tell you. So let's ask what's for clearing. When I ask, I'm asking the universe, cosmic consciousness, the connection that I have through my healing team and my spiritual helpers. I'm not just at randomly asking some roaming spirit that's floating around. I am directly connected to my spiritual helpers, like my archangels, for example. Archangel Hanel, who stepped in to be present, and also Archangel Michael, who I work with all the time. And if you see me on video, sometimes you'll see his energy. So if you if you notice that, like kind of a light blue energy, if you read energy, if, you see, if you're very clairvoyant, you might notice that in some of my videos on Fairy Grasshopper. Okay, on my YouTube channel, I'm Fairy Grasshopper. So for clearing, let's try this. H O P E. Oh, that's so much smaller. I wrote it so much smaller. Heaviness. Ooh, we want to clear the heaviness. Where's the heaviness? At the heart. Heaviness, heart. Heavy heart. Heavy hearted. Heavy hearted. Okay, so this is what we're requesting from your healing helpers, your spiritual support team aligned with your highest good. The energy of God, creator, source, universe whatever that you are most in alignment with that is supporting and sourcing and, and loving you through this experience of life. Heaviness of heart. We're just acknowledging that and asking your spiritual helpers, your intuitive self, your higher self to guide you through that shifting or lightening up of the load. Okay, we're, I'm not going to force a clearing. I'm not going to evoke a clearing for you right now. I am just going to ask your team to support you, to lighten the load. Heaviness, let's make it lighter. We know it's in the heart space, so we know where to go and where to focus. We know that, okay? We know it. We also know that Archangel Hannah is really focused on the heart as well, and she brings in compassion, so use these things. These are tools, use them. Archangel Hannah, the color pink, compassion, and the heart, boom. Easy, not hard. All right, so when we're thinking about clearing, open. You do have to open your heart in order to receive a clearing. You do have to open your heart in order to allow the energy to flow. The stagnant or stuck energy is getting bunched up in the heart. It's like Grand Central Station and the trains are off, right? The timing is off. One can't come in. The other can't leave. I mean, it's a whole thing, right? It's tricky. It's busy, busy, busy. It's the transportation center. It's the hub of you. You've got to be open. You're like, Bridget, I don't know what open is. Well, the first thing to do is to allow your mind to not be so cluttered with heavy thoughts. When you start to feel negative in your physical body, check your thoughts. Get some positive inputs coming in, whether that be through prayer, through reading a book, through getting distracted by something funny. Like watch those reels on Facebook, they're hilarious, or TikTok or something, get lost in something funny. Let your, yourself switch into a different energetic vibration using your mind, okay? Because it's your mind that has helped you get stuck or stagnant or stale in the first place, okay? And your body is just holding that energy. That's what's happening. That's why you feel heavy physically, okay? So open yourself up, especially in the heart space, to receive some laughter. 
even if you're dealing with grief, even if someone you love just died yesterday, okay, there has to be an openness, a tiny little crack so that the light can come through so that you can find a moment of joy. Laugh until you cry. Watch the cute dog videos. I love them. They're so cute. Watch a great movie. That's, that just feels good, like childlike for you, okay? Something simple, so simple. Listen to a good podcast, okay? Read a book that is just fiction or read a book like I've been reading off and on for the last couple months, Eat, Pray, Love. Yeah, I never read it. I hadn't read it. You know, Liz Gilbert, yeah. I hadn't read it, you guys. I know, I'm way behind the curve, like years behind, like decades behind. I haven't read it. And so I just started reading it little bit by little bit. It just kind of refreshes me. It gives me a little fresh perspective or a fresh take on the world and my approach to things. And I enjoy listening to someone else's story. And it's not supercharged, it's not intense, that kind of thing, right? Don't do some self-help stuff. Light, okay? to balance the heaviness. Open, so open is O. All right, so P for the clearing is presence. Oh, you gotta be present. You gotta be willing. You gotta be willing. Avoidance is not helpful. (laughs) Avoiding the fact that there's a problem, ignoring it does not help, it festers. You got an owie, you ignore it, it gets worse, it gets infected. It gets disgusting and all of a sudden you're in the ER because you can't walk because you didn't take care of your foot that has an owie on it, okay? So gross, but true, right? Presence. Presence is just a state of awareness, okay? It can be spiritual if you want it to be. Oh, yes, presence, be present and blah, blah, blah. Hello, Eckhart Tolle. Hello, priestessing. Hello, all of the spiritual masters being present, being present. But it's true, you guys. I know it sucks to know this. It really does, right? Because it's so spiritual. But how about this? Presence is just another form of allowance, right? Of awareness, of allowing yourself to be aware. (gasps) You're not ignoring, you're not avoiding, you're just allowing yourself to be aware. And awareness is a state. Okay, allowance is just like a state of openness, right? And awareness is just a state of presence. Boom, I allow it, I'm aware. I allow myself to know and I'm aware, I accept knowing. I allow myself to know and I'm aware, I accept knowing. Boom, that's an action, like you did something. So your brain should be all happy because it's very human-y. To, to do something, and yet your spirit with the presence of the energy feels very spiritual. And so there you go. Woo, everybody's happy with presence. <laughs> so then the E literally feels like everybody. <laughs> We're gonna use everybody, everybody. Every body specifically, because I'm feeling into it. I'm like, is it everyone? No, it's every body, because your body needs to be included. We've talked about the heart. We've talked about your spirit. We've talked about your mind. And let's talk about the body here and this hope, the clearing. What needs to be clear is every body. So the parts of your body do hold your energy. They do hold memory. They do. If you learn about trauma-informed care, Oprah's got a book with um, Dr... Is it Bruce Perry? Dr. Perry is his name. I can't think of his name, but his first name, but Dr. Perry, which interestingly in 2020, I actually took a course um, with other therapists and counselors about trauma-informed care. I shared about that, by the way, on Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube in 20, I think I shared about it in 2021, but I took it in 2020. So it's a whole thing, right? And it talks about how your body holds that trauma. Or it holds the memory of the experience. And trauma is just, it doesn't have to be an event or a particular identifying marker or a significant event, like a tragedy. It can simply be over time, repetitive patterns of abuse or misuse or mistreatment or stress. And haven't we all had repetitive patterns of stress over the last two years? Yes! No matter how well-equipped or capable you are, people around you have been having a problem, and therefore, you are impacted. So you have experienced stress by proxy. If you are like this person that never feels it, then really you're just probably not attached and not connected to the earthly plane. So, (laughs) let's be real and talk about how every body, your body holds stress, which is why some people have used their body to make major changes in their body during this time, like hardcore exercising, really diet stuff, trying new ways of exercising and new fitness things and what have you, or also have done the opposite where they've 
We have eaten things that have tried to soothe us or comfort us, which has caused our body to respond or react or create new allergens, new, new like, ew, resistance to things and caused us to not feel well. There's new disease in the body, right? And so the body is a huge part of this experience, this life experience. And if you want hope, imagine what you can do. If your body instinctively holds stuff, wouldn't it be awesome if it held the light of hope? So that during the times that you didn't quite feel yourself or you were a little bummed out that day or you had an argument with your spouse or you lost a big account at work or your kid is really struggling at school, whatever it might be that you're impacted by to the varying degrees that we all are because we live real life and we all are impacted differently on different days by different things, right? Usually it's outside of us, let's be clear. But the reaction inside is internalized and it's our body trying to assist us. And wouldn't it be great if we could have these reservoirs of hope instead of reservoirs of resistance and fear? Reservoirs of hope to really source from and access because that's who you are. That's what you are. That's what hope is. It's inside of you. It exists. So the word hope now represents healing. It represents the status of healing within you, and the power of your body to rise up and meet the challenges of day-to-day -day life and to embrace it. The O is for, let's feel this here just a minute. Being on, on. A state of being actively aware not hypervigilant, but in a state of awareness to be able to recognize the knowledge that you hold within you and the wisdom tapping into the reservoirs of hope and light that exists within you. So always for being on, but not in a hypervigilant way. We're going to use that concept to allow our physical bodies to be become one with our process of igniting, allowing, and, and utilizing the hope that already exists through the light within us. P is for the word passive, passive. Oftentimes I've heard this in passive aggressive, right? We're gonna use the word passive in a way that there is such a subtlety about the natural undertone of how you are just optimistic, of how you are hopeful, of how you are knowing that you are held, loved, and supported just as a basic core foundation, just for showing up at life. You are loved, honored, and supported, boom, inside of you. So passively, you're gonna know this. This is gonna be a passive thing, kind of a casual thing, a subtle thing, but it's just a fact. This passive energy of hope. You are loved, you are honored, you are supported, boom. Because you're a person, people. You are people, welcome. And E, everlasting, everlasting. You are an eternal energetic being. You will continue to live long beyond this life that you have here now. But you came here, my friend, for this experience, the embodiment of the human experience, recognizing that you would have all these tools, the energy awareness, the soul intuitiveness that you are, and the heart sensing that you are, using your body to experience and feel and house all this information, and your mind to help guide and direct you to keep you safe when you're crossing the streets so you look both ways, right? Simple as that. Oh my. Wow. This has been quite the hope-filled Sunday morning coffee with Bridget. I hope you've enjoyed this particular podcast episode today. I hope we've inspired your spirit today and filled you with some hope, encouraged you to live your life. After all, it's your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.